You are now live streaming to Twitch Linus Tech. Click here to open a browser to view the stream. <laughs> Remember to mute the stream to avoid the audio loop. Good <laughs> guys, Twitch. They must have that there just for us. Yep, because we do that like almost every time. Welcome to the show, everyone. Welcome to the show, everyone. We have super we cool We have topics. a super cool topic. I got it wrong. <laughs> I was like, I thought you were copying me, but then you did it slightly different. I can't even screw up correctly. <laughs> and that's the kind of show this is, folks. Guys, we got a lot of great topics for you. The Fury X is sold out everywhere. Why would that be? I guess we'll find out, won't we? Actually, we're just going to be speculating, unless I have some insight. I was I actually, I was going to ping you for that insight. I have Damn the insight. Oh, okay, anyways. Batman Arkham Knight PC sales have been suspended. Cause, bah! Because they sprayed silly string at one of the teacher's daughters. Yeah. Also, that Dis happened to Disney, me banned, <laughs> Disney banned selfie sticks. Probably also because of silly string. Yeah. Silly string is for chumps. And, then and Xbox, me, I like silly string too. But Xbox wants to give silly stringers a chance. Or just people. Or people. Or people. Or ducks. Or gamers. Or... I painted something last night. Your car? No, no, I no, I painted, uh, I painted a painting. Oh, I saw that. That was yep. actually pretty good. Yeah, I painted a painting. Like legitimately, I I would troll you, but it's yeah, it's actually pretty good. That was my painting. It was it was literally paint by numbers. Oh. Well, sort of. Like you, oh, you had freeform. You you did have to freeform it, but like there's instructions. It's like step by step. It's like it's like I made this delicious <laughs> roast duck. Except that there's someone making roast duck right next to you. So did they paint the exact same painting? But Pretty like, much, but yeah. like, so you, you couldn't trace though. No. Well, you still had add some skill then. So I had so I had a hand in it, but I, yeah, it's not like from a mind. Well, I was, was like, was, yeah, but if it was your that, that's that's like watching a recipe on YouTube, and then recreating the recipe. Except that in this case, the person who is making the video, you know, the YouTube video, actually goes and obtains you, like, the food that you need, and the <laughs> pot that you need, and, like, the fresh water that you need to clean your brush, <laughs> and a chair to sit in, and a bunch of other people in the room also making a duck. I still think it's cool. Well, thank you. No it doesn't problem. look as good in person. Oh. I think that's kind of a thing with that kind of stuff. Uh, I guess we should roll the intro. Yeah! No! <laughs> okay, one of these days, we're gonna get this right. It worked last week for the intro, but not the outro. Did it? I thought yeah. I figured out what the problem was. Well, that's because it tricks you. It's, it's, a, it's a trust experiment. It, it pulls you in, and then it throws you down. It's uh, terrible. Okay, well, hold on a second. I'm sure there's... It's in the assets folder, right? It's like chocolates. You eat a whole bunch of them, and your body's like, yeah, this tastes good. These are good for me. Oh, man, yesterday was disgusting. But you can't, can you say what? It's Glenn's fault. Here we go. Yay! Where are the sponsors? Awesome people? Well, yeah. Oh, wait, oh, sorry, sorry, Squarespace! I fixed it. I fixed it. Squarespace, I fixed it. All right, guys, <laughs> so it's time to get this show on the road. What were we yeah. starting, what were we Our first one is nine, R9 Fury X selling out everywhere, and you already spoiled, I was going to ask you the question to bring you into the thing. But... All right, so first let's get the link to the forum up in there. Right, do, do you have it, do you have it? I okay. I'm going to bring up WCCF Tech, everybody's favorite new site for graphics cards. Yeah. Sold out. <laughs> now here's the thing. Sold out can mean a lot of different things. It can mean that there wasn't enough. It can mean that the demand was incredibly high. It can mean that you took a bunch of money and abandoned your values and morals for the money. Sold out can mean a lot of different things. But what sold out means in this case, I believe, and the, 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 uh, the under headline here, this is interesting, Fury X selling like hotcakes, have you ever even bought a hot cake? No, so they must not sell that well. I've never even Maybe, seen okay. a hot cake for sale. Okay, should we straw poll this? How many people have bought a hot cake? Who has bought what, a hot what cake? What is a hot cake? What? See, I don't even know. So they're not marketed very well. <laughs> okay, let's. We're straw They should be called the R9 hot cake. We are straw polling the crap out of this. We hot are, cakes. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, all the time. Uh, never heard of them. Whoa. Turnip. Maybe maybe hotcakes are turnips. Uh, right. Never heard of them. And uh, let's go somewhere in between. So we need to hear from you guys about hotcakes. Cause, well, because I've heard of them, but I've never purchased them. But you don't know what they are exactly. That's fair. Which is part of why you... like. That's like me saying that I've... I've heard of, you know, um, clandestine destiny. Yeah. And like, but I don't know what that would be. Right. Exactly. It's a pancake. It's a pancake. Wow, I've had a lot of pancakes. Really? Why are they called pancakes? Uh, hot cakes or pancakes? Hot cake. Noun. A pancake. Why don't you just call it a pancake? Because it's hot. Idiot. But pancakes. <laughs> no, I'm with you. <laughs> okay. I'm, just, I'm just trolling the crap out of you right now because I'm a 100% on the same page. On the the first like Yahoo answers, what is a hot cake? And if they're selling so well, wait for it. Why have I never seen one? <laughs> okay, all right. Anonymous poster. What is your name? You don't even have a profile picture. No. But I'm totally with you. <laughs> okay, so 31% of you, yes, all the time, with 27% of you having never heard of them, just like us. Is this an Americanism? Maybe. Oh, uh, I don't know. Because everyone that I know, something went wrong. It doesn't know who it is. Damn. Earliest times in Amer hot cakes cooked in bear grease or pork lard were popular from earliest times in American. In American. First made of. I'm thinking they mean cornmeal, the that griddle is something, blah blah blah, etc. etc. So maybe this is an American thing. But then again, pancakes is that an American thing? I I I I I feel like everyone that I know from the states says pancakes. Uh, everyone in the chat is saying. American thing. There's some people saying it's an English thing, but almost everybody's saying American thing. Okay, and, and I've got people saying McDonald's calls them hotcakes not up here. McDonald's had pancakes. That was like 10 years ago or yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah, it's but they had them. They called them pancakes. pancakes yeah. So, I, oh, I thought someone was going to come in here and correct us, and they're not welcome in this room. If pancakes that's what are all not about. American. Well, we've done some, some solid research on this show. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, so let's get into the stuff that we actually have any idea what we're talking about <laughs> with here. So WCCF Tax article says, uh, selling like hotcakes and out of stock at all major retailers on day one. So I have a little bit of special insight. I can't let you guys know who my, you know, special informant would happen to be. But what I heard from someone involved in the retailer business <laughs> is that on launch day, they had literally zero. Yeah. Like not one, not so a single be, one. It could be selling like hotcakes if McDonald's didn't have any that day because they screwed up the order. Right. Well, and, but then they wouldn't have screwed up with their order. And... And I heard a rumor that the total inbound shipments is somewhere in the neighborhood of, um, you know what? Oh, I don't want to say too much. So let's say, uh, let's say I don't think they're selling that well. well. I, I suspect that in North America, in North America, I suspect, and this is just it's based on things when you don't have them in North America, I suspect there are less than a thousand would be my guess. That's a somewhat educated guess. Basically, the Fury X doesn't even exist. So, there you go. Um, I mean, here. Here's what I want to know. Let's straw pull the... Let's straw let's, pull this. This should be just, just be straw pull day. Yeah. Just straw pull every day. Straw pull, straw pull day today. Fury X... <laughs> The answers are, and I want, okay, a lot of the time ah, we, we just, we just like, we troll you guys. Okay, I'm counting on you this time. I do want real answers this time That's because. The wrong thing to say to Twitch no, 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 the, no, 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 no. Our, our, our viewers, they, they got our back on this one because this is actually pretty important. It's for everyone's benefit to know what's going on here. So, Theory X, the answers are I have one, I know someone who has one, or. Uh, other so like you don't have one and you don't know anyone who has one so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna create that wow, straw no pool turnip. and there no there is no you're, you're for real right there now. is no troll turnip response because wow. i want to know what's going on are they selling like hotcakes or do they not exist let's go ahead and fire these results up here really interesting. um linus's screen so we don't count. 
Yeah, we don't count. We have one. So reviewers. Okay, guys, if you've already voted and you sort of... Uh, anyone who didn't pay for it doesn't count. So if you happen to know, like, Ryan Smith from a non-tech, that doesn't count. He didn't buy it. So pretty much it looks like um, it looks like I was barking up the right tree there. You know what? To give us some context for this, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to create a new straw poll right now called... 980 Ti. I was see. I was. I was. I knew where you're going with this, but I was thinking about saying uh, Titan X, just because I know that 980 Ti is gonna win. This is gonna make it a little bit harder on that team. But if you want like a price point comparison, because 980 Ti has been out longer too, so it's, it's been a out longer. Higher likeliness that someone is gonna have it. Okay. All right. Okay. No. No. Let, okay. What we need to do but then? But the Titan X has been out even longer. No. Let's revise. Let's revise the question then. Okay. So 980 Ti, I got, I got one in launch week. Okay. I know someone who, who got, got one. one. In launch yeah. Week. Okay. And other. And other. Okay. And again, we don't count, and like reviewers don't count. Yeah. People that got it for free. Yeah. We count. we want to hear from you guys. We want to know like what's going on here. So Linus is screen share. We've got just shy of 95 percent of you. So with a whopping 34, so a whopping 60 of you either have one or know someone who has one. And since I suspect there's a little bit of dishonesty at least, basically out of the Linus Tech Tips audience, if nobody has these cards, I'm, 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 I'm straight up kind of calling, yeah, these actually don't exist. So let's go ahead and let's post that 980 Ti straw pool now. And I want to see the results from that from you guys. This is going to be really interesting. So, okay. So we've got here 15% of you saying they had got one in launch week or they know someone who got one in launch week. So with that said, I know that 980 Ti was quite supply constrained as well. In fact, continues to be, to be supply constrained. We actually pitched to a major graphics card maker that they send us 10 980 Ti's, not permanently, so that we could test um, which ones would which ones would turbo boost the most. We talked about this on one show last week. That was your idea. Well, was it my idea? It was your idea. We, we were talking about it and you were like, what if we got like 10? And I was like, okay, because I was talking about like two. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it was a group idea. The, okay, not the point. Anyway, the point is they basically went, no, we don't have enough to even lend them to you for a week. Um, and I was like, well, what if you lent them to me and like you give me NCIX's allocation and then I hand deliver them to NCIX. So they're going like they're going straight to the retailer. But we don't have any, bro. So when you compare that to R9 Theory X... Which is a little weird, too, because the balance is off. If you look at the two charts, um, on average, the exact same amount, basically, having one and knowing someone who has one for Fury X, and then almost twice as much, which is expected, someone knowing someone who has one compared to having one for 980 Ti. Right, so that means that the Fury X one probably is just full of trolls, who are just picking anything. Well, the 980 Ti one probably has a lot of trolls, too. Right. But that, but that split actually makes a lot more sense on the 980 Ti one, having a lot more people knowing someone who has one. Very, very interesting. Especially with the percentage of people that are watching the WAN show probably having a very high percentage of people that are on the forum. Right. Meaning that they very likely know someone right. who owned one of those cards. So that's very interesting. Um, now, I have to run for a minute, because speaking of the Fury X, I think I might have left it in my car. Um, so you're on your own for the next topic. Okay. Well, knowing that Linus leaves his car unlocked, if someone can get to the outside of the Linus Tech Tips headquarters before Linus can, you can get a Fury X for free. It's not really free, it's stealing. But, you know. Anyways, in other news, we have more AMD stuff, which I'm sure Linus will want to weigh in on. AMD says Granada Pro and XT are not rebrands of Hawaii, and... They're a little bit right. I was on the call with AMD while they were talking about this, and they were like, no, we spent a year working on these things. We've improved stuff. Blah, 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 blah. So I will talk about what they've done. They've increased memory clock um, for...
from 1250 megahertz to 1500 megahertz on both 390 and 390x. They've increased memory bandwidth from 320 gigabytes per second to 384 gigabytes per second. And there's an 8 gigabyte frame buffer on all their cars instead of a 4. Uh, so there isn't like the OC version 8 gigabyte and non OC version 4 gigabyte setup. Um, they did a complete rewrite of the GPU's power management microarchitecture so that in worst case scenarios they're kind of the same in terms of power and in typical gaming load the 300 series uh, 390 and 390X will draw less power than a 290X and perform a little bit better than a 290X. Cool. Is this our new one? Yeah, it was actually, it wasn't even in my car. It was in the trailer behind my car. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't see it because it was under something, which is probably why no one else saw it. Oh, yes. So this is our new Fury X, uh, which is really funny because I, uh, I was at NCIX today shooting NCIX Tech Tips, and um, they were like, you have two? We didn't even get one. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, we only have two because our first one was DOA. And they're like, yeah, but we didn't even get one. <laughs> it's like, how did you get, how'd you get two? I'm like, well, when we said it was dead, they sent us a new one right and away. And I think our performance, after seeing everyone else's reviews, I think our performance on the first one might actually be fine. It's just artifacting all over the place. Right, yeah, cool. Which isn't, like, we can't report that, because... Yeah, exactly. Like, we're not going to report those numbers, but we, we straight up were like, okay, it's not performing as well as, like, you, you guys know, are saying it is. Yeah, and so we thought the reason for that was that it was artifacting. We didn't think the reason for that was that it just didn't perform as well as, uh, yeah. as expected. So what I'm talking about is uh, the rebrand stuff possibly not being as rebrandy as people might have thought, blah, blah, blah. Have you read about that at all? I have. Is that one of our news topics today? Because yes. if so, we should jump right into that's it. What we're, oh, that's I what we're doing right now. Yeah. So my problem with the way that AMD is spinning this, and spin is really the right word here, is that it's all about presentation. Intel did Haswell refresh. They did a 4790K, which was basically a 4770K with a clock speed bump and changed thermal interface material yep. and a refinement of the manufacturing process. But they were straight up about it and they didn't increase the first invention number. Exactly. They this didn't a, call it 5000 series. Yeah, yeah, that was my main point. This is a 300 series card. If it was like the 290 something, although that gets weird because they've already used some of those numbers and yeah. And like here's here's the other issue. Like what's the what's the code name? What's the what's the code name for it? It's um cuz they changed it from Hawaii to something else. Like they actually gave uh, it a new code name. Granada Pro? Yeah, Granada. So they changed it from Hawaii to Granada whereas Intel even their internal code name is Haswell Refresh cuz that's what it is. In fact, it is. It, it's even. It's even sort of unusual for for Intel to do something like that. And the only reason they did that was because they changed the thermal interface material. That was that was a huge part of the reason for that. Otherwise, they could have just called it 4790K, and it would have just been a higher speed bin. In fact, that's the way it used to work in the past. If you guys remember back to the like the Pentium Four days, you'd get an architecture, whether it's you know Willamette or Northwood or Northwood B, Northwood C. Like they used to revise them like that, and then you'd get like okay, you know it's a 3.0 gigahertz Northwood C, and that would be the flagship. Yeah. And then three months down the line or six months down the line, they'd Launched the 3.2 gigahertz Northwood C. They don't call it a different thing. You don't. You don't have to call it a completely different thing. It's just like, oh yeah, it's a speed bump. That's what it is. And and we can recognize that it's better. That's fine. That's cool. I want to bench a 390x versus a 290x to like show what potential improvements there could be. Probably mainly power, but whatever. Um, and but but like, don't call it. Don't make a layman think that it's a jump. I think that's the biggest problem because. Nobody in our audience is going to be fooled. No. Is going to think that a 390X is a big upgrade over because a 390X. there's threads all over the forum and stuff. But people are trying to be like, oh yeah, you should get into PC gaming. It's really not that hard to build a computer. All this kind of stuff. It's super easy. Just pick some parts and like, if you buy within the right part price categories, it's yep. probably going to be fine. And someone's going to go to the store and buy a 390X and be like, yeah, I'm going to rock all those dudes with the 290X. Doesn't want to do a whole bunch of research and that's wants to play fine games. you shouldn't have to yeah a higher number like should it, be better yeah and when it sounds a little and you know what but boring, the thing but it's okay true. the thing about all of this though is that i don't want to ride amd too hard about it 
because it it's super crappy. It's a crappy thing to do. There's much worse stuff. But Nvidia's done it too. It's not like the. It's not like. It happens all the time. Yes, especially on the low end. And you, you, see, the thing about Nvidia is they're kind of like they're savvy enough to not try to pull the wool over the eyes of the enthusiast. Like Nvidia is going to go, okay, yeah, we know we're re-releasing the 680, so we're just. They're gonna call it 770. We're gonna we're gonna knock it down a peg at the very least when we uh, yeah, rebrand that. I, at least there's that because yes. this is a 290x and a 390x. But when it comes to like the general tearing. the general consumer oriented cards, it's not like Nvidia hasn't done that with I, I believe the 300 series. Many of you won't even know there was a 300 series because it was OEM only SKUs was a straight rebrand of 200 series low end cards. Straight rebrand. They changed it from a two to a three. Maybe that's what made AMD think it was okay. <laughs> um, and it's not <laughs> for their two to three. <laughs> and I mean, Terrible. it's not like Nvidia hasn't milked a microarchitecture before. I mean, um, shoot, I can't remember what eighty eight hundred GT G ninety two G ninety two Nvidia milked the crap out of that thing. Brutal. That was the eighty eight hundred GTX didn't they, or GT. Didn't they literally like? Sticker pull and re-sticker cards? Yeah, the 9800 yeah. wow. GTX <laughs> Plus or something became the GTS 250. And so the 8800 GT somehow turned into a 9800 GTX, which turned into a 9800 GTX Plus, which I think had more RAM or something, so that's pretty much what we're looking at here. At yeah. least they called it a Plus instead of like a something, you know, higher number. Oh, wait, except when they rebranded it GTS 250. So let's not pretend that um, let's not pretend that AMD is the only one doing it. It's just crappy no matter who does it, and AMD has done it most recently, so they're the ones that we're going to pull down our pants and take a big turd on for doing it this time. It's not, yeah, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not good. And the fact that they're sticking to their guns about this That's is like, like... Come on. It, it's not a rebrand because it has... Um, we worked on it for a year with one person part-time one day a week. It's like... I shouldn't say that. No, and that's not fair. Be nice. It's um not. and like like I get it. Like 290x 8 gig was actually limited in terms of which board partners were making them. Not because AMD doesn't want to sell you a higher the ASP card, but because l yields were probably very limited, either because they were saving cores for this, or because they really did have to retool things fairly significantly in order to make it all happen. And the, the power stuff is legitimately cool and may have taken a lot of work, but there's a lot of people speculating, and I kind of think they might be right, that the memory being faster is just because they put better memory on it. Like, nah, that's why I said it didn't really take any time. The power stuff... Yeah, okay could be a lot more difficult. All right, speaking and, uh, of things... And we might be wrong about the memory stuff. Too. That are a I lot more it. difficult. Oh, God. Uh, here, I'll go ahead. I'll post this. Do you, you want to do 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 lead us off on this one? Okay, so... Arkham um, Gate! Don't screw with PC Master Back Race, gate. I guess. Um, um, Night Gate! PC Master Race got real mad, and everyone that owns a computer and wanted to play Batman got really mad. Uh, because Batman Arkham Knight was frame rate capped at 30 FPS. Did you see the funny photo where it was like a speed limit sign in the background that said 30? Did you see that? I didn't that see that. That was hilarious. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to find it, but I can try. Maybe someone will post it in the Twitch chat. Someone was like, did did uh, did they warn us? And it was like a, a Batman teaser photo, and he's coming towards the camera. In the background, there's a speed limit 30 sign. <coughs> Sorry, I just thought it was hilarious. Um, so... People were demanding refunds like crazy. I think a lot of people did get refunds through Steam. And then Steam actually suspended sales of the game. Or well, I don't know if it was Warner actually Brothers. Steam or Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers suspended sales of the game. Um, Steam ratings were sitting around 35% positive. Holy crap. That's terrible. Anyways. That um, hurts. Yeah. So... That's basically it, to be completely honest. Apparently, it was able to be unlocked by editing an INI file. But, but like, like, why? Yeah. Why? Like, I, I get it. I like having the INI file. I had to use an INI file yesterday because I was trying to launch Crisis 3 and I had copied over a save game and the last but thing the I had used it on... the should be there in, like, uh, like last case... 
like last resort yeah. or or like if you're if you're 80 mods deep in Skyrim and you're like I broke something but I can fix it like that's exactly cool. so the, the, in this situation the last <clears throat> computer I had used it on was the iMac Retina so it was a 5k display so oh. like when I opened the game it was like I was seeing like the corner of it on a 1080p display so I couldn't actually navigate to the menu to change my settings. And I was like, okay, this is an unusual situation that pretty much nobody would ever find themselves in. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll break out the INI file. To, to just have, to, to need the INI file in order to unlock the game from 30 FPS is just totally unacceptable. And the, the, the thing that I don't get is how do they not learn? Check your hands. How is it possible that they cannot learn? Oh yeah, here it is. This is awesome. This is from uh, the PC Master Race subreddit. Um, Have you so you've seen this? Yeah, in the background there's a 30 FPS, like not 30 FPS, but it's a speed 30, limit 30. 30 miles an hour, I guess. Speed limit. FPS lock warning. I love the MS Paint skills here. Yeah, yeah. Is that what that is? <laughs> the fact that they can look at Assassin's Creed Unity. And look at Watch Dogs, and look at these titles where developers are being crucified for these completely unnecessary limitations. If it works above 30 FPS, why isn't that the default? And I mean, I guess saying it works is, is sort of generous because, um, I mean, Warner Brothers came out and said that AMD owners would experience performance issues which yeah. really i mean the the most frustrating thing about this is that whether nvidia is being completely upfront or not whether they are or not like if nvidia is to be believed gameworks doesn't hurt anyone else's performance it's just extra eye candy that happens to run great on nvidia because they designed it and basically handed it to the game developer to put inside the game so for a developer to come out and just say uh yeah it um just like is it is gonna work kind of crap on uh on amd cards by the way this is a game works title i mean i would love to know you know what's going on in nvidia's sort of minds when they're sitting there going okay so we're going to be getting a bunch of bad PR over something that, in theory, is just the developer and AMD not getting their crap sorted out. Yeah. Just because we in have theory. GameWorks. In theory. And you know what? I haven't, and I will probably never have get a full understanding of what exactly goes on behind the scenes with GameWorks. But what I do know, and this was a really good point from Tom Peterson about, uh, what was it, uh, Witcher 3, I think where when it came out, yeah, yeah, Witcher 3 came out and AMD performance wasn't very good and a lot of it was getting blamed on Gameworks and then AMD had a fixed driver and I think it was one or two weeks. And so Tom Peterson kind of went, well, hold on a second. So they managed to fix it in like two weeks. So where was that development effort two weeks before the launch? It seems to me there's no problem here. Yeah. Um, and I kind of went, yeah, if they can fix this in like two weeks, what's the problem here exactly? There's there's questions as to um, like whether yes. it was fully released to them and stuff. Yep. So there's if they questions had two about days that before the launch, or if they've actually been working on it for a month and they had two weeks before and two weeks after or whatever. But AMD also does a lot of crying about how GameWorks is a black box and impossible to optimize for, when it turns out that two weeks they, after a launch they can, they, they can optimize yeah. for it just fine um that's true so so anyway so warner brothers already came out and said yep well amd users peace bro and then performance is um uh having some issues on nvidia gpus as well so um there you go steam ratings were sitting at 35 percent positive like you said and warner brothers games apparently listened and this is kind of funny uh some of the textures um uh, some effects like ambient occlusion and rain that the NVIDIA GameWorks video showed off are actually completely missing on the PC, but present on the PlayStation 4. <sighs> I noticed that too. Well, I didn't notice it. PC Master Race subreddit told me. So. Those guys, they're like the they are like the guardians of... Have you like... seen the rating system? This should have been in this topic. They're, they're making a like PC Master... I'll try to find it. The sure. PC Master Race like, official rating system, and they have a chart. Um, so like... If, if your game only runs at 1080p, you can't get above a certain rating. 
if your game doesn't have mods, I think you can't get the glorious rating. Um, but you can get, like, righteous if you have a whole bunch of stuff, but, like, not technically everything. And, like, there's this whole crazy... It's cool. Um, All right, well, in the meantime, I'll do a really quick topic here. So we, we talked about this last <clears throat> week, and the... I was just going to say, I could be wrong, but I think it was actually Corsair George that made that rating system. Oh, really? Really? It was... Like, his username's, like, Ballistic George or something, and it has a Corsair tag beside the username, so... Yeah. Okay, well, in the meantime here, I'll do the, uh, I'll do the Fallout, um... The Fallout Magnetic. pre-order. Here we go. What? Sorry, that was a... Magnetic. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, let me do this. So, we talked about the guy who sent... Oh, crap, what was it? 11.2 pounds of bottle caps mm -hmm. to Bethesda... Um, to get a copy of Fallout 4, which actually ended up costing in shipping about half as much as just a pre-order the game would have cost. Um, and it turns out that they were very careful about the wording. Yeah. <laughs> because I guarantee you, Bethesda does straight up not want, you know, 10,000 people shipping them 10 pounds of bottle and caps. And like every person that works at a bottling place would be able to get so many so fast. Um, so they, they very <clears throat> carefully said, uh, so he sent 2,240 caps. Because he was the first person to do this, he would be receiving a copy of the game in November. So it was Corsair George. Was it? Yeah. This is Ballistic George official Corsair Ballistic George tag. And this is the one I was looking for. I had no idea it was him. I think oh, send me the link. Send me the link. Okay, so let's yeah. move on we'll take to a the. Second, uh, my laptop is slow as hell, but yeah. Let's move on to the the Corsair <coughs> the Corsair George rating system. Oh my goodness! Oh, like oh so apparently much. it's a George <coughs> from Corsair. Oh, not what? the George from Corsair. It's ballistic George. So it's not our George not, Macris. Not it is George a different Macris. George. See, they have the same problem as us. They do. Where we but have we too call, many nicks. We call ours different things. Well, they call them Ballistic George. So that's like a... But then they call the other one just George. Right. So we have Nick, and then we have Burkle Nick. <laughs> but we just call him Burkle. Ballistic Burkle. <laughs> just start calling him bal <laughs> Ballistic Nick. <laughs> We're just BB for short. Hey, BB. Oh, hey, 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 BB. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and pull oh, this no, up. BB. So PC... PCMRG, so peasantry. The, this port fails to deliver a quality that is even comparable to consoles. Frame rate may be capped at 30 FPS. May not support 1080p or higher. Optimized poorly. Mod support, none. Uh, mods may result in online bans. Servers, possibly weak, unreliable servers. And possible day one DLC with uh, glitches. Uh, so it goes all the way up to Righteous. This port exceeds the standard set by its console counterparts, but does not reach the full glory and potential of PC gaming. Um, so 60 FPS capped, potentially limitless. 1080p may include multi-monitor support. And then glorious basically means this is as far as it goes. There's no limit to frame rate. 4K or beyond resolution. Gloriously optimized. Complete support for mods. Strong servers with dedicated or custom servers available. Uh, no day one DLC or DLC is free. So yeah. with there you nearly go. no glitches. With nearly no glitches. So all the people that rated Skyrim as glorious are wrong. <gasps> There's so many glitches in that game. There is so did many you just, glitches. Did in you that just did you just speak out against the Elder Scrolls? No, I don't I'm think just I've saying, ever. No, I don't, yeah, whoa, 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 no. Actually, did you just say no? Actually, did you just say no? Did, hold on, I, I've you have to answer the question. Elder Scrolls to, Online. Yeah. Did you just speak out against Elder Scrolls single player? <laughs> well, I'm your not favorite even, games of all time. I don't necessarily mind the glitches, but there are glitches. I don't necessarily like, mind that. Spoken like a true fanboy, yeah. the glitches give it character. <laughs> There's certain games where glitchy crap is fine. Like I was playing Super Mario Bros. the other day. I was playing Super Mario Bros. the other day, and I used my cape, and it completely glitched out, and I just laughed and keep playing. Some of them are okay if they're, like, funny. If your game um, crashes to desktop, like Skyrim does a lot, it's not actually funny, and it's really dumb. 
Or if your mouse clicks through the screen, like a lot of Bethesda games do, that's not funny. I'm going to let him keep going as long as... Uh, uh, he's There's gonna, more glitches. He's, he's gonna, There's he's where gonna... the giant will hit you and you'll just go like infinitely upwards. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, you can fall through the floor. Yeah. Your your horse can just like fly at certain times or go completely vertical at yeah. mountains. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm going to yeah. run out here, actually. But I'm sure there's more. I'm sure the Twitch cat, chat can tell me more. I just find it funny that there's an official PC Master Race rating system that takes one of the PC Master Race's favorite games and doesn't put it at the highest tier. Dun, dun, dun. That being said, due to the full mod support, you can fix a lot of those glitches. <laughs> so, so that's where the glory so comes in. So does it count? Because there's full mod support. Oh my so god, you're them. coming full. I knew if I let you talk about this long enough, you were going to come but, full circle. I don't know. To- <laughs> but does it? I'm, I'm asking you guys. Should we straw pull this? Should we straw sure. pull this? Okay. Does uh, the ability to fix a glitch through a mod rectify the problem fixing glitches through <laughs> makes it okay what what is that look at this ad on straw poll it just popped up while i was creating my straw poll wow Whoa. you know what's funny is we actually have a fastest possible episode coming on ad block very soon <laughs> Can't, did i tell you that no <laughs> Uh, that's stroke in the fire. I, uh, I guess everyone watching already knows what it is anyways. Yes and no. Well, I, I mean, the thing about Fast as Possible is it's very search optimized. Like, if you search that's a good point. for a topic that there's a Fast as Possible episode for, I guarantee you it's going to be right up there in the search results. And it's designed for that. That's what that whole channel is, is like quick searchable stuff. We want someone who's like in a store just trying to figure something out really quickly to be able to actually figure it out really quickly. Yeah. They're like, what is this OLED thing? Yeah. There should be a why, video. Why is this random big box store employee telling me this is better and just keeps on saying, but it's better or not actually better? It has more technology. Because it has more technology All right. Inside. So there's a straw pull. Fixing glitches through mods. Makes it okay or doesn't make it okay. And and remember, this is a very much a, a, a glory of the PC Master Race thing. Okay. Yeah, because I'm, I'm honestly just wondering how Skyrim actually fits in their tiering system. Because it's just, it's weird. So we've got 46% of you saying it doesn't make it okay. With 33% of you saying it makes it okay. With a question mark. And 21% of you... It's on the turnip rough. bandwagon. We should do a turnip shirt. I'd wear that. Like I would definitely wear that. Vote for turnip. And then yeah. it should just have like a turnip in a box. It should look like the vote for Pedro shirt. We should do a turnip shirt. I, I should do a straw pull for that. <laughs> there you go. The most straw pulls. Should we do a vote for a turnip? Now this is a really, this is an important straw poll. So, someone in Twitch chat was like, ignore the actual question, vote for turnip. <laughs> yes. Oh, awesome. Alright, um, here we go, here we go, here we go. Should we do a vote for turnip shirt? I mean, I don't even, I don't even know. Did you put turnip is... in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering about that. I was like, this so, has to have the turnip one. So troll, bro. I'm voting for turnip. <laughs> I'm going to vote for turnip too, darn it. <laughs> yes. So we've got a, a, a whopping 5% of you that say there should not be a vote for turnip shirt who also are not voting for turnip. So, Flashing gang signs, yo. Don't so, pull a neck muscle. So this guy, okay, here, let's do let's do a quick uh, let's do a quick a quick promo spot. Come on, okay, Burkle's gonna Burkle's gonna join us for for a minute here. Why so, is that box wet? Uh, what? Whoa, what? <laughs> do we have a leak? The hell? Ew. I feel like I should have just said nothing. I don't Look know if I can that. sit on this couch with you guys. Ew. What's back here? Oh, just mold. <laughs> Glad we're moving. Okay, so, um, upcoming Channel Super Fun. For those of you who are not subscribed to Channel Super Fun, what did we do today? Oh, we went golfing. I thought you were talking. I'm, I'm, <laughs> other- I'm editing the other one, which I'm oh, thinking about right now. About the other Oh, we, yeah, oh I my. said, yeah. Okay. What I'm doing today is editing the other one prior okay. to that one. So you guys, great. I'm giving you guys an assignment. We have two Channel Super Fun videos coming up that are going to be redonkulous. 
if you know anyone who you think would enjoy Channel Super Fun, and if you're not subscribed already, get over there, get subscribed, because what? Okay, so the one we did this morning, uh, we played we played golf, we played pitch and putt. So uh, okay, but we used equipment that we got at the dollar store. <laughs> And that's all I need to say about that. I can't believe we made it through. And for the one from yesterday, um, do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah, I think you should. I think you should spoil it. Oh, um, well, the whole explanation. Yeah, yeah. Well, well no, not the whole explanation, okay. but just the. All I can say is what I'm editing today is just basically disgusting footage, slow mo footage of Linus and Nick eating Jello till their stomachs are at capacity. And it's just, it's painful to watch. Like, I'm having a hard time getting through it because I want to throw up now, and I'm probably never going to eat Jell-O again. <laughs> so, if you guys liked Jell-O, maybe never watch it. Just forget it ever happened. Great send sales it, pitch. Send, send it to your friends, though. Cause yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. because, yeah, I mean, Jell-O's not that great for you anyway. So, you know, if you're trying to help someone get over their Jell-O addiction... We have a Jello addiction therapy video coming for Call you guys. Call the hotline. We'll give you. you no, know, that might not number. work. Watching people eat copious amounts of Jello is probably not going to help. Like that's like saying, yeah, if you have someone who's addicted to alcohol, we'll send you a video of people drinking insane amounts of alcohol. What if it was a video? Well, okay, hold on a second, because some anti, because some like anti smoking or anti drug smoking, or yeah, 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 like it'll like it'll show like like the it'll show like the the footage from above the spinning blades of the fan, and there's like the baby in the crib, and there's like all this smoke in the air. <laughs> it's just like that's what our Jello video is. Dude, if you if you eat Jello, you could be like this guy. <laughs> you could have a Jello overdose. And that would not be good. Jill overdose. Yes. I think that's my signal to leave. <laughs> Bye. Oh my god, that was fantastic. All right. Boom 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 boom. What's our next topic? What I topic don't even are know. We on? What have we, have we even done? Any topics? We were talking about Batman. Okay. Uh, so let's talk Taylor Swift for a minute here. So uh, okay. this was posted by it's me for Quan. On the forum, our Do you original just article shake here. It? Uh, I just want to shake you just it off. Want to shake it off. Yeah, you're really far over. <laughs> I know, but like, this corner's like this pillow's wet. Oh, that's your pillow though. That's your. No, wetness. I know, but it was wet before I got in here. Oh, that's gross. All right, so Taylor Swift calls <laughs> Apple Music free trial shocking, <sighs> disappointing, in open letter, and I'm gonna say right now we've we've. We've sort of said that we don't think Taylor Swift has sort of, um, uh, we don't think she has a firm understanding of what exactly it is that's going on. We've said that before. Um, it's happening when uh, I think she and some other people were speaking out about it. She also said some other really stupid thing. I can't remember what it was. I don't really pay attention to that stuff. So um, oh, right, yeah, she pulled all the music from Spotify or whatever because music shouldn't be ad-supported or something like that. And Anyway, uh, the point is, this time I think she's 100% right, and there's one reason for this, that a lot of the people who are just kind of hating on Swift uh, for all of this are missing, and that was that Apple was offering a three-month free really trial. Good music. Thank you for... I just wanted to defend her somehow. Why do you even? She, what, gets, just, she just gets hammered. I gotta, I gotta support the other side. Okay, so I'm saying she was right. She has, she has exceptional musical talent. So, do you even listen to She's Taylor Swift? She's a good person. Do you even listen to Taylor Swift? No, but lots I do. Of people do. Right. So why would you even? Well, I, I was listening to the Tony Hawk Pro Skater Three soundtrack today. I'm not a musical authority. <laughs> 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 it was awesome. It was so cool. So the part Whatever. that people are missing in Taylor's letter, whether it's sincere or not, that she says it's not about me, you know, I can make it back in concert tickets or whatever else, it's about the little artists that maybe can't afford to go three months giving away their music for free, is the fact that Apple, a company with literally tens of billions of dollars in the bank was simply giving away the music to people for free during the trial and literally not paying the artists for the plays. Yeah. They were just 
giving it away. And I guess, hey, we just won't pay you. They won't pay. Everything's good, right? Yeah, it's great. So what was it? Like a day after Swift's letter, Apple promptly went, oh, yep, okay. Looks like we weren't going to get away with that. Never mind then. In, in much more eloquent words and yeah. uh, went ahead and pulled it. I think that's great. I think that calling out Apple on stuff like this uh, makes a ton of sense. With that said, I really, I don't, some of, some, uh, Brandon travels in some, wrong. she's not wrong at all, she's 100% right, yeah. but Brandon travels in some more photography-y circles in terms of where he gets his news from, and there are some folks pointing out that, um, well, uh, you know, there's, you know, Taylor's not exactly always the most progressive either. Apparently, photographers who pay for the rights to photograph at her concerts, uh, each image can only be used for editorial purposes once, so they can't actually re-monetize a single image. And not only that, but they are not allowed to use the images in their own portfolios, um, mm. which to me is just kind of like, if you're going to be all about sort of, uh, you know, digital, digital rights and creator rights, I mean, you should probably have a bit more of a progressive... Um, policy for the people who are working for essentially promoting you come on let's be honest about all this um so yeah that's and oh that's in so <clears throat> yeah so, so an industry photographer released an open letter to swift outlining this so they're forced to sign off the rights to their photos in perpetuity to artists while only maintaining the ability to publish them and be paid for them once uh stuff like this does exist in many industries it's just interesting to see you know these the open overlap. letters yeah flying around That's back and forth it's a very different scenario it is a different like, scenario extremely different scenario. but if you paid for the rights to be there and it's not cheap if you paid for the rights to be there and photograph it should you i mean the portfolio but one is the one way, that blows me away the way that i and like i agree with the photographer people but i'm trying to make an interesting conversation um the way that she is protesting this is by taking her music away so if you want to protest that don't go take the photos. That's a potential argument. I agree with the photo yep. guys. I'm just saying that. Yep. But like, you you could try to protest this by just having none of your dudes go to take photos. But the thing is, other people are going to do that because it's Taylor Swift. So. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, well. All right. So what do we got next? Ah, Disney theme parks ban selfie stick. The original Hilarious. poster was Good Bites. And the original article here is from The Verge. You got this uh, You yeah. got this link here? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and uh, whip this link up. Selfie sticks are no longer welcome at Disney theme parks, says The Verge's headline. After doing its best to accommodate selfie sticks, Disney bans them. So I think the first question here is why hasn't everyone banned selfie sticks? Everyone. Everyone Cities, ever. Municipalities, governments. Countries. Yeah. Why haven't countries banned selfie sticks? They're obviously hazardous. Um, so I got one uh, for free. I didn't buy it. I got one for free. Someone gave it to me. I got one too I tried free. to plug it into my phone to use it, and it just changes the volume. Ah. Or so it zooms. I'm like, good work. <laughs> what? So yeah, that didn't get much use. You know what's really funny? I have used my selfie stick. But you're talking against what? I have used my selfie stick. How However, much? how much? I, I what I and used where? it for was GoPro footage. Okay, that self kind of makes sense. But is GoPro footage of yourself still a selfie? If it's on a GoPro? Well, is a video. It was for a video I was making. Is a video a selfie? Mm. It's straw poll day, right? <laughs> I think for a video to be selfie, it would have to be one of those ones where, like, someone's pivoting with it, which you could do with the selfie stick, and then your face stays, like, in the same part of the frame all the time. You know those kind of shots? So then it could be a video selfie. I think so. I don't know. Okay, well, what you know we what? just the, Google selfie? The Twitch chat is going to resolve the crap out of this for us. The Twitch chat knows more than... Okay, That's you true. guys are just all voting for turnip Turnip! Now. Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud! We can't get it. We're not going to get a straight answer out of you guys for the rest of the show, no, no, are no, no, we? No, 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 no. Turnip is a straight answer. Turnip is a straight answer. So we've got only sixteen percent of you saying yes. A video is still a selfie. So I guess while I have used my selfie stick, 
I haven't technically, according to 85% of our audience, used it to take a selfie. <laughs> you count the turnip ones as no, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's how I'm counting them. Turnip's a wild card, man. <laughs> you can just decide what turnip, ca- turnip counts as? Uh, yes. Turnip. So, visitors who carry one, they'll be enforcing this at the gate, will yeah. have two choices. Leave it at the entrance and pick it up on your way out, or don't bring it to begin with. <laughs> Those aren't choices. <laughs> they um, have one choice. It goes into effect at both Disney World and Disneyland on Tuesday and expands to Hong Kong and Paris on July the 1st. So they're spreading the word through announcements at their hotels and audio messages in the parking lots. They initially tried to accommodate them by forbidding them on rides but allowing them elsewhere on park grounds. But people snuck them in. People continued to take them on rides, which is like a whole other level of stupid. It's like you have a selfie stick. That's dumb. You use your selfie stick to take selfies of yourself. That's, like, super lame. You endanger the lives of other people with your stupid selfie stick. Now you need, We're like, you need to sit down. And, and you're potentially you just, ruining you to, some kid's day. You need to sit down and get a stern talking to. Um... So, yeah, this week a roller coaster at Disneyland was put out of commission for an hour because a guest... Uh, because of a guest using a selfie stick at the ride's highest point. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So some museums and the Cannes Film Festival have already banned the accessory. Yeah. Progressive Disney. And honestly, like, they're kind of annoying. I went hiking not that long ago in Taiwan, and people just yeah, take Yeah, but you were in Taiwan. Space. I know, but I, I get it. But people Who take didn't up, have a selfie stick. The, yeah, I know. But people take up so much more space when they're doing it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you're trying to be courteous and all this kind of stuff. And when you see, like, the family that pulls someone aside and tries to get the photo taken, like, sure. But when it's someone, like, every five feet, like, with a freaking selfie stick. Like, God, you're taking up so much space. The trail's really, really small already. Like, a, <laughs> a lot of the trail is literally too short for me. Like, there's only, if I stuck my arms out, it's going to be over the cliff. Like, and then they're taking selfies. You can't walk past them. Ridiculous. Apparently Coke's giving them away in the UK. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. All right, so let's... Uh, oh, we should do sponsors. Yeah. Right, so our sponsors today... I fix it. Squarespace. I, Squarespace. You know what's really weird? What? I did a Squarespace spot today on NCIX Tech Tips. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah, they have Squarespace as a sponsor, and I was hosting the video, and I was like... This is weird. So visit squarespace.com and use offer code not Linus. Use some other offer code. Which, this time. Huh, that's weird. No, 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 but I'm on WAN show now. So today, use offer code Linus to save 10%. Yeah. If you want to build yourself a beautiful, functional website for your people. blog, your store, your... Oh, we have something Almost really... Anything you want. We're doing something really exciting with Squarespace for a, um, my a, mom, an upcoming show. My mom made a website on Squarespace. Did she really? And it actually looks pretty okay. Can um, I look at it? Yeah, we can show it. Okay. Uh, Did you help her? Uh, no, I'm going to, but I I have not yet. Is it on their Twitter? Give me a sec. Do do do. Please have a link to your website. Why is it so zoomed in? What's going on? Oh my god, my laptop sucks. It's this though. Look for that. Um. Uh, okay. Okay. I got this. Okay. Uh... This, but no spaces. <laughs> Come on, mom. <laughs> 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 there. Okay. So there we go. Squarespace site for Cali Beggs. Yeah. Have I been duped into promoting your mom's thing? Boom! Wrecked! <laughs> Did I just get played that hard? I didn't actually go about it in that intention. <laughs> wow! <laughs> All right, so basically, <laughs> there's an about page. You can like look at some stuff on here. So she did all of this. So she did all of this herself. Okay, so let I me tell you. I didn't help her at all. She she was having trouble with another hosting service that I'm not going to bring up. Oh, that's all. Oh, so that's a dead link. Uh, I'll have to help her with that. Okay, so she does need some help. Oh dear, what's going on? That's not good. It's cool, Mom. We'll figure it out. It just... Whoa! That just happened. What? I think the... Everybody went to it and it brought it down. 
But oh, maybe she's not on Squarespace Is she not yet. on it yet? She told me she... I thought she was. Way to go, Luke! Well, that's why the website went down there. You know what's really funny? Actually, okay, well... I don't know how I don't know how Squarespace is going to feel about us basically showing up one of their competitors on a sponsor spot cuz like I seriously thought she was already cuz she told me she was going to go They're on a lot more professional than like calling out a competitor for like straight up getting taken down when people go to the site. Oh dear. But let's just uh, let's just talk about the benefits of Squarespace. There's another Squarespace website, linusmediagroup.com. Yeah. You know what? Let's just talk about the benefits of Squarespace and leave it at that. <laughs> so what's great about Squarespace is they have scalable hosting. And what happens is, and we've experienced this many oh, times in no. the past, when a bunch of people flood to the beautifully created website that's also very functional, at the same time, Squarespace is able to handle that load without any difficulty. <laughs> so you're going to want to, uh, so they've got a bunch of great templates you can choose from. I really don't know how I'm going to pull this one out <laughs> of the fire. So let's say if you guys are building a website... <laughs> Uh, help no. your mother, I told Luke. her. I told, uh, I told her I'd help her, and she should go to Squarespace. Visit squarespace.com and oh, use no. offer code Linus so your site doesn't crash when we call it out on the WAN show. No. You've let everyone down today. I, uh, you've let down your mother. I, you've let down me. You've let down the viewers. No. I should have double-checked, but I was pretty sure. Oh... All right, that so sucks. second sponsor. Also, I fix it. This spot cannot possibly go any worse than the last <laughs> one. <laughs> iFixit.com is where to go if you need help taking oh, apart no. your devices and repairing uh, them or upgrading them or whatever the case may uh, be. And their flagship product, you guys, is the iFixit Tech Toolkit, which is uh, freaking awesome. Luke and I both have them. Yep. We love them. How often do you use yours? Uh, I used it yesterday. Good. Are you sure you didn't use something from iFixit's competitor <laughs> yesterday? Would you like to pull it out and show the audience? I could go get it. No, it's okay. okay. So the point is, the uh, the ProTech Toolkit has a 54-bit driver kit <sighs> with specialty and security bits. It's got, like, pry tools. It's got a bunch of tweezers. It's got a magnet for pulling crap out of places. It's got an ESD wrist strap. It's basically freaking awesome. We love them. And if you use offer code WHEN, you can save $10 off a purchase of 50 or more, which means you can get the ProTech Toolkit for 55 bucks plus shipping. Brandon used it to take apart the Fury X. Yeah. Here, here we go. What are you trying to do to me? I'm sorry, man. Ah, I didn't know. Here's our iFixit <laughs> kit. That's Luke's iFixit kit. It is. You can tell. We like we like marked our territory <laughs> on our iFixit kits because like the thing that's great about the tech toolkit is that it has all these little pieces. So if someone else borrows your tech toolkit and they lose your Peace. All my pieces are still here. Yeah. Do you, are they? Well, are you missing one? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. Did you think I was? I was one? missing one in mine for a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I dropped one of them in a shipping box that I shipped out the day after I realized. I wonder if I dropped it in that shipping oh, box. No. I was missing my magnet. Oh. The magnet is like super handy. It's just a bit for the screwdriver that takes out the magnet. Did someone? Did you get it back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dropped it in a shipping box, and right before I packed it up, I was like, oh, maybe I dropped uh, it in there. I thought you and were saying, like, you realized it. it the day after, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I got it, I got it. That's so, cool. um... I'm sorry, Nate. I fix it. Offer code when... And that offer code changes all the time, you guys, so don't sit on your butt and think that you can use the offer code later, necessarily, it's if you want one of them. 14 days. It's good for 14 days, so get on that and uh, save your 10 bucks. So, um... So, Nick... Nick is gonna get like a heart attack or like some other kind of crippling, crippling injury. A heart attack. <laughs> I'm so done with you. Check, your, check the last email I just sent to you. Oh, what? Oh, jeez. Do I even want to know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Do I have to? Uh, no. I don't think so. Last email I just sent you. You sent me an email? Yeah. Oh, 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 no way. Those look like the book from... Yeah. All right, okay, okay. So I think it's going to be the last straw poll of the day. And I can trust you guys. I can trust you guys on this straw poll. We have done no tech news today. Yeah, we did. We have done like... 
four stories. We have done a low amount of tech news today. <laughs> what is this show even? <laughs> I don't know. Way show. Yes. Every week, Fridays, 4 p.m. PST. 4.30 p.m. PST. And not always PST, about... could be PDT. Yeah. Just PT. Yeah, Pacific. Part-time. Part-time. <laughs> you're you're going to be part-time at this rate. <laughs> no. You've, you've made your... Yeah, you've... <laughs> I'm just going to slash your pay. My, my, an hour, my hour availability will be like the availability of Fury X's. Oh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you guys option one and option two for vote for turnip shirts. And I'm going to download these yeah, so I don't say. show you guys do all my emails. <laughs> Who did this anyway? Me. Oh, you did it. Yeah. Really? Nice. Well, they're not like crazy good. I think they're crazy good. Is it... I think we should go with the this style. I think. I actually I didn't know how I was gonna like the second one, and I kind of like the second one better. Oh, don't influence! Don't influence the viewers. Okay, so we want you guys to vote for option one or option two, but first I'm going to show you the options. <laughs> this is. Oh, I zoomed in too much. So. <laughs> this is vote for turnip option one with the turnip. Okay. Yeah. And this is um, a look at my Dropbox uh, progress bar. Uh, that's a, a Wren Show thumbnail. Okay, give me a second. Just give me a second. <laughs> oh show. my god. That is my, professionalism. That is my pictures folder. Maybe you should host your pictures on Squarespace. And this is the... I don't even want to hear about anything from you to do with Squarespace <laughs> yeah, for the rest of the show. This oh. is the regular Vote for Turnip shirt. So, option one is with the picture of the turnip. Option two is just with the text. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna post that straw poll right now. Mm. This will influence the turnip shirt, whichever one wins. Okay, you guys? But on that straw poll, will there be a vote for turnip option? No. Should I, should there be? No, 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 no. no. no, we, need a decision. no we need a decision. We need a decisive decision. Well, because both okay. of these are voting for turnip. Rather than, yes. going, rather than going option one, option two, you should say, with turnip picture, without turnip picture. It's done. It's just... <laughs> to be fair, Nick was very right. Wow, it's a dead heat. Look at that. Maybe because they don't know what the options are. So Thank option you, one is with the picture of a turnip. Option two is without the turnip. Option one costs us more because there's make, more ink colors. Could we make a, a war? A war of the turnips? Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Like a turnip fight. You are not having a good day. <laughs> okay, no, but you can have like two two warring Teespring campaigns, and then you see who wins. That couldn't work. Damn. Because like with Kickstarter, you yeah. have to like put your money on your vote. Yes. But like if we could make it so that everyone had to vote, and then you just get whatever one wins. Wow. That would be like a whole new shirt buying paradigm that absolutely no one would like. <laughs> you just buy whatever shirt everyone it's, it's, decides it's like, they're buying. It's like Tea Fury, but you don't get to pick. It's like Mass Drop plus Teespring plus like plus like the haunted house where you put your hand into the bucket of like spaghetti and like grapes and then you pull out a handful and eat it. That's what that idea is. <laughs> I get your idea, and I like it, but I think it might be ripping off T-Fury. Huh? T-Fury? No, because, no. They always have, like, two, and they, it's like, buy... Yeah, no, but my idea is, you don't get the one that you necessarily voted for, you get whatever one wins. You're the worst person <laughs> ever! <laughs> why are, Why did you even wake up this morning? Wow! I meant, wow. why did you get out of bed, not why did you wake up? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I wish you were sleeping forever. <laughs> what a way to break up with someone, right? <laughs> this is the worst man show no, ever. No, no, it's it's not. It's there's not, like seventy two hundred people <laughs> watching. It's not you. I just wish you were permanently sleeping. I yeah. mean, I, you, why did you get out of bed? I no, don't I'm wish sorry. you. I don't wish you were dead. It's still okay if you consume oxygen. <laughs> just, but I never want you. I never want you to talk or move. <laughs> I hate this show. <laughs> okay, so it looks like the one with the picture of the turnip one. And I guess we should probably do some tech news. 
Because we have like 20 minutes left in the show. <laughs> Okay. I like Burkle's version. I am so thirsty right oh, now. Okay. I've been like talking and laughing too much. It's illegal to rip CDs if you live in the UK. Yeah, so this was posted on the forum by Ah Ming. The original artic article here is from f.org. Oh. This is the stupidest thing ever. Yep. Because ripping CDs Whew. is not sharing CDs. So I don't understand what the issue here with ripping CDs is. Um, yeah, sure, thank you. Yeah, I, I could use a drink. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think his desire for my permanent sleep means that I'm not getting a drink, but it's okay, I understand. Um, <laughs> so court strikes down law allowing users to rip their own CDs. Yeah. I don't have much to say about or this. There, there, there are possible like ways to get around this is to supply evidence um, that the copyright owners suffer no or minimal harm from uh, personal copying yeah. or impose a new tax on users to compensate the industry for that harm. I mean, we already have that tax in Canada, so there's that. Yeah. It's really funny, though, because the tax is on, if I recall correctly, blank media, and then, I think, MP3 players. <laughs> so, like, the two deadest categories ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I saw peace, <coughs> media industry. Hope you enjoyed that levy while it lasted. I was in, um, you know how I made the video about the Taipei Tech Mall? Yeah. Beside... I haven't watched it yet. That's, I feel that's bad. Fine. It's, I, it's I should a, watch it's it. It's a weird it's not a normal video so right. it may be interesting um beside the brand new shiny fancy tech mall yeah. there's the old building which is the old tech mall which isn't shiny at all it is very unshiny but there's tons of tech i think there's like 11 floors or something and they're all just tiny little stores that are right. jammed completely full of just right. stuff one of them was a blank media store they sold dvds and cds and there was people shopping really do they not have USB drives? I walked by and was just like, what? You know what's really funny is uh, a friend of mine in high school, and uh, I'm dating myself a little bit here. Ooh, Ooh. Um, thank you. A friend of mine in high school. Wow. I think it was a trip to Hong Kong. Okay. Or Taiwan. I'm not sure which one, so I don't want to, don't quote me on it. But this is like back when I was in like grade eight. So USB thumb drives were like... The, yeah, the shit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like it was a 16 meg, and like he got a 32 meg because he Ooh. like splurged on himself. But he, still, that was like a really nice gift because all of a sudden I had a USB drive and like everyone else was slumming it with floppy drives. Yeah, yeah. Floppy yeah. disks, straight up, okay? So, um, so I'm kind of wondering how is it that we've come full circle here? <laughs> There was there was flash media stores. There was there was a store that um, I know I sold know. only flash stuff. They sold flash drives. They sold uh, M.2 things. They sold hmm. SSDs. Right, so just, like a memory just store. Just only flash stuff. No hard drives. No hard drives. Wow. Yeah, just flash. What does that there, say? About there was the also of the industry? hard drive stores. Right. There was everything. There was like five different places that sold like basically the exact same thing on a floor. It was ridiculous. Um, anyways, that's really all we probably have to say about that, I'm assuming. So the court accepted that the EU copyright directive does not require that sellers must be able to extract the every last gram of value from the copyright, so the personal copying exception may have resulted in loss of sales. Um, for example, a consumer may have refrained from buying an extra copy of their favorite CD for their car. Uh, so the government failed to provide any evidence that these lost sales were zero or minimal. Um, you so, should be able to refrain from buying so extra copy got, of CD for your car. You absolutely should. That's if you're, so dumb. If you're buying something that you're licensing rather than something that you're owning, then you should straight up have a personal license to it. I mean, that's the way that anything sensible actually works. I mean, Office yeah. 365 is my license for the computer? No. That's the direction the world's going. The license is for me personally and the five devices that I want to use it on. Freaking awesome. That is the right direction. 
Um, so yeah, this this is. I buy not certain the right soundtracks. Like I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Supergiant Games, and I really like their music department. Like the music for Bastion is fantastic. I listen to that soundtrack while I run a lot. Uh, the music for Transistor was also very good. I think Bastion was better, but regardless, I bought the Transistor soundtrack. You actually found the disc for it. Yeah. That's because I ripped it and then completely forgot about it since the game came out because why would I care about the disc? <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. Who cares? Um, so this was posted by Twisted Dictator. Um, original article here is from PCGamer.com and it's Assassin's Creed news. So this is either... <clears throat> this is either Ubisoft kind of you know, pulling their heads out of their butts and, uh, you know, really committing to PC gamers that they've, uh, they're taking it seriously now and they're like ready to, ready to do things properly or this is going to have to, uh, okay, if Assassin's Creed Syndicate is a mess on the PC, do we do keep on digging V2? Do we do another keep on digging shirt? <laughs> Keep on keeping on digging, or something like that. <laughs> keep on. Oh my God! You could make it like the keep on keeping on, and then just put the digging in the middle of the text. Yes. Like those. Yeah. Anyways, that would be an awesome. I that'd think be a so. really cool shirt, actually. Mm -hmm. Um. So, creative director tells PC Gamer at E3, we've got an internal team that's dedicated to the PC version, and one of the things I'm happy about is that we're really taking our time with the PC version to really make it shine. We want the game to really work well on the PC on day one, which is why it's not the same launch date as the Xbox One and PS4 versions. It will come a bit later in the fall, but I think it will be worth the wait. Haven't they said this before? So they're taking a page out of Rockstar's book, where, okay, yes, PC gamers... Yeah, but GTA V came out pretty okay. But it also took a really long time. So I think yeah. they're finding a... Well, that's exactly it. So they're taking a page out of Rockstar's book. People were upset at all the delays. But you look at the amount of upset people are over Arkham Knight versus the amount of upset people are over GTA V, where on Arkham Knight it translates into bad reviews and people not buying the game. And with GTA V... Oops, I almost just flipped the bird at the audience. Where with GTA V, it translates into people buying copious numbers of copies. Jack from NCIX was telling me he literally owns two copies of the game. One for the Xbox and one on PC. So that the like extra that. features they built into PC can be enjoyed again. And one really smart thing that they did was your online character could transfer... So you could bring them from the console version to the PC version. So there's people that were like over level 100 on day one PC, which was a little insane. But it's not really that big of a deal in that game, so who cares? So um, so yeah, so that's basically all there is to it. So it's going to come on the, to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 on October 23rd. And um, they're saying a bit later in the fall. So that means we're not going to be looking at 2017 for a release. I mean, given that Assassin's Creed is on a yearly release cadence, it's not like they can wait that much longer. <laughs> like, they can't be launching, you know, Assassin's Creed, uh, you know, Amazonia, or whatever sort of locale they end up going to next. Amazonia would, would on, like, work. the they Xbox, and then... Yeah. That would like, actually be awesome. Jungle Assassinations that could be, be pretty so bad. so cool. I really want that game now. Um, maybe not made by Ubisoft, but I really want that game. Oh, uh, come on. You know okay, what's... I want to say two things about this real quick. First off, I believe they said exactly this crap before. We're focusing on the PC version. It'll be better. It'll be good. It's coming out Speaking of which, afterwards. our next news topics are Microsoft. <laughs> With the exact same crap. Anyways, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll try this one. I'm not going to pre-order any of that crap, but I'll try it because we're probably going to bench it anyways. Yeah, you're going to wait for our bench copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if it's good, I will not finish it and go back and try the other ones. And any of them that are playable, I'll try to play through and catch up. Playable. It. Wow. Haterade, you are drinking it. Yeah. Needs like an H on here. <laughs> it's blue, it works for Ubisoft. I'm surprised you drink Gatorade. I would think that has too much sugar in it for you, it Mr. It does, Hellfreak. but there was two two things of liquid, you took one of them. I'm really thirsty, it's oh, crazy hot in here. I thought this was for me, I thought that was like your Gatorade, because I don't have Gatorade. He handed him in where'd, that Where'd direction. the Gatorade come it's from? It's not mine, I think it's Nick's. Oh, he gave you his Gatorade. I, I guess he. That's why I said thanks. He doesn't times. hate you that much. He doesn't want me to permanently sleep anymore. Yeah, that's nice. Or maybe he does. Well, it's not to, nice. It's just, me with sugar. it's just not horrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Microsoft. This was posted by Jaws on the forum. Just made millions 
off of Windows XP, software that is literally over <clears throat> 10 years old. With that said, it's not like um, it's not like the way that a company sometimes makes money off of 10 year old software where they actually don't have to do any additional work and it's just money in the bank. Uh, this is a contract between the US Navy and Microsoft to continue to provide security updates and patches for Windows XP for the 100,000 workstations that they're still busy transitioning um, to newer operating systems. So I guess for the US Navy, you know, given how many workstations they have uh, going on that are relying on Windows XP, Office 2003, Exchange 2003, and Windows Server 2003. Um, the, uh, the contract, which could extend up to 2017, could be worth the $30.8 million to not have to have the software that runs on those PCs. Because you can even look at that and go, really? $30.8 million? Like, they could just buy a bunch of, like, badass, like, Digital Storm gaming rigs <laughs> for $30.8 running Windows 8, which they could upgrade to Windows 10 and then not have to worry about this for a while. <laughs> that would be so weird. Just like, you walk into a Navy thing and it's like, Digital Storm, water cooling. <laughs> it's like, okay. I don't know. I'd expect much more, like, industrial style stuff. But, but the anyway. issue is the software that won't run on newer versions yeah. of Windows that would have to be rewritten and that they're kind of still working on. Well, that's so. why, like, people... Was it the Omron video? They were like, oh, lol, Windows XP. And I'm like, yeah, it never connects to the internet. does the same thing all the time. It's probably okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Anything that doesn't connect to the internet could be running Windows 95 for all that matters. Like, it, 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 it never connects to the internet DOS. and you don't plug anything into it. Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. It has a keyboard and mouse and then you do stuff. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Windows 10 Insider. This has been huge news this week. This was posted by Kodiak, and the article here is from Ars Technica. Microsoft clarification kinda clears up the Windows 10 license confusion because this has been some confusing stuff going on right now. So Microsoft can't make up their mind about what's going on with Windows 10 licensing. So first, the rumor was that that people running pirated editions would get Windows 10, and then they were going to get upgraded to Windows 10, but it was going to be with the same restrictions as the pirated ed edition or something, whatever whatever that means, which is uh, okay. And then it was uh, insiders were going to get free copies of Windows 10, and then it was insiders are going to get um, upgrade copies or something like that, so they would have to install the, wait, something. Okay, people who have Windows 7 and Windows 8, they get an upgrade copy, they'd have to reinstall the old one and then install again over top of it blah, 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 blah. the whole thing's been confusing but the big one has been that Microsoft said they were going to give insiders so the folks that have been essentially uh, beta testing the software a legit full copy of Windows 10 for nothing and they have clarified it now the requirement is that whether you're on the fast track for new builds or the slower track for new builds you have to stay in the insider program in order to get the free ongoing legitimate product. So to opt out of the insider pro uh, program, you will need a valid Windows 7, 8, or 10 license because without a suitable license, the operating system will eventually expire. You know one thing I've been wondering about with the pirate license thing, this isn't 100% on topic, but if you have, you know how you can like, there's, 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 there's ways to get your computer to make it think that it's activated for a little while and then a lot of times windows will figure it out and nuke it and then you go unactivated or whatever if you are kind of like fake activated are you going to get your key overwritten and then be permanently activated on windows 10 i don't know if it's very clear right now there's still a few things that are up in the air but the point basically was hey um the Insider program is looking pretty cool if you don't mind beta testing software for Microsoft. And the fact that this is on an ongoing basis really points to a really different uh, philosophy for Microsoft Windows. I like it. With, it sounds like, much more rapid releases and much smaller feature upgrades. I mean, that that is really cool, really exciting, and thank you to all the insiders who are... Uh, 
who are who are testing all this stuff and giving feedback so that we can get you know better versions of Windows as time yeah. goes on. I'm, I'm liking this whole I'm liking this whole new Microsoft thing that's going on. I wasn't sure that a CEO change was gonna make a difference, and it really looks like it has. A lot of times it, it doesn't, but a lot of times it really does nothing. Yeah. Just like uh, it's like an on the surface sort of change, whereas this looks CEO's like a much thing. Yeah, but they hired him from internal, and they hired him from like the cloud team or something, didn't they? I think so. So they they hired a fairly technical dude to kind of take over that spot. Like in the whole like in the whole change going on over there. Dun, All dun, right. Dun, 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 dun. Now we should do we should stick on the Microsoft news bandwagon because this is actually what I thought you were gonna bring up. Um, after the Ubisoft thing, because it would have made a ton of sense um, to go right after the Ubisoft thing. I don't know if you even knew this was in the doc, though. So, uh, Xbox Phil Spencer, I want to give people a chance. I called this out in the topics at the thing. That so, was when we say things at the uh, Who the posted show. this one? Twisted Dictator? This was Twisted Dictator again, yeah. And this is very similar to the Assassin's Creed one. That is not it. Though. Wow, that's really funny. I, uh, okay, I gotta show you guys this. So, I clicked the link, I thought, and, oh, wait, oh, I clicked the wrong link. Anyway, I clicked the link to the Assassin's Creed one by accident. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah. It, so it's not that one. Anyways, he, he, he states that he wants Xbox to be the best TV gaming platform, but also give the users a choice to play games when they're not around the TV. And he says, as a gamer, I play games on PC. I want to be able to play the games where I want to play them. I want to give people a choice. Um, and basically, he goes through saying that if, if you want to play, where does he call out titles here? He calls out titles somewhere. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. If I if I want to play Killer Instinct, if I want to play Gear, if I want to play Fable, I should be able to do that. And I shouldn't have to force people to buy something by um, excluding their choice. Xbox says a lot of crap and then never does anything about it. But aren't they bringing Gears to PC? Um I think so. I don't think they're. I don't think they're doing the entire back catalog. So the assumption would be that you've already played all the Gears games on Xbox, or else you're going to get dumped into the story in the middle of whatever's happening in Gears. I don't play Gears because it's not on PC. Yeah, never, never, I don't know. <laughs> I know there's some really jacked dudes, and they fight aliens. I know that there's a gun. And with, they have like, a saw a on, on the it. bottom. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, um, and like a chainsaw. Well, I there think there are chest high walls if Yahtzee is to be believed. Yes. So. There's blood on the chainsaws that are on the gun. Right, but that's only if you kill dudes with it, or you, or you like slip and cut yourself, and then you hide in a corner and you heal. I would assume <laughs> that there's. Gears. But the blood doesn't dry. Ah yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyways, I I think they have actually been stepping in this direction. So, this is a whole bunch of words that technically have no actionable items behind them, and no promises that they're doing anything at all. So it could mean literally nothing. Okay, cool. But I'm hoping that it kind of does. And especially with the Xbox app on PC, there is a ton of potential here, because if they want to start doing crazy amounts of cr cross-platform stuff, that'd be cool. Speaking of cross-platform, um... I've been doing a little bit of work on the Shield Android TV thing. You know what's really cool? Yeah. There's um, War Thunder on Android TV. Yeah, I knew that. And it's not just Android TV that you play on. It's cross-platform. Yeah. yeah. So I can play with my buddy on PC while I'm on my Android TV. On Android TV. That's very cool. Yep. There isn't, like, I've been messing around with uh, Android TV and so, so f the stores are weird. I finally realized that, like, if you really want to use it, you should really use the NVIDIA store. Because the Google Play Store for Android TV is crap, but the NVIDIA store is actually really they good. They actually do, the Shield store, or the yeah, Shield the Hub, Shield store is they great. do a really good job of curating everything. And it's like, yep, the, here's the stuff that should be relevant to you if you own a Shield. The Done. Android one, it's so fragmented. Yeah. Like, I was trying to find games with Nick, and we'd be like, oh, okay, here's a list of games. And there'd be, like, five. And I'm like, wow, this is all the games they have on this platform? What? And then, like, half an hour later, we're in some other menu with a whole bunch of them, but they're all unsorted and there's no ratings? I'm like, what? <laughs> but then, yeah, the Shield Hub had ratings and more stuff. So it's no anyways. wonder Google is, like, buddy-buddy with NVIDIA. 
Um, like Nvidia, they're doing everything for Nvidia them. is investing really heavily in Android as a gaming platform. You can really see it. Things like yeah. the fact that my Shield Portable is probably the oldest device that I own that is still getting Android updates. Um, Nvidia is doing a really good job of trying to support these devices. I sure wish instead of that they would bring us Shield Portable 2 instead of things that hook up to your TV and things that are a tablet. Well, not instead of. In addition to. I mean, yeah. those are good things too. I just I really want a new Shield Portable with a Tech X1. I hope. I hope. Oh. <laughs> if there's something that is viable, I guess I would understand. But I really want them to just stop calling their new device just the Shield. Like give it, give it a full name, so that when something else new comes out that you're also going to call the shield, it's not just called the shield again, and then that old one gets a new name. Because isn't the shield console actually just called the shield? I think it's called the Shield Android TV, which oh, okay. is the then stupidest thing ever. It's a really long name, but at least yeah. at least it's self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, yeah. It's it's really it's really confusing. I, I wish, yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know what the naming. So like, you can tell they're kind of making this up as they go. Yeah, and they're just kind of like trying things, throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks. I mean, the thing that they're the thing that they've been really clear about from the beginning is that the software is important. Yeah. So they're really focused on making sure game stream rocks. They're really focused on making sure the Shield Hub is like Shield Hub has been completely redesigned at least once since uh, since I've been I like using it. it. Yeah, That's um, good. very good. But the hardware, they're just I think they're just kind of trying stuff. <laughs> like next, we might see a Shield backpack. I I, I don't know. Well, I was kind of thinking when when I said like I don't know what devices you would come out with. The first thing that popped in my head was a drone, the battle drones that we've been talking about. Oh, that would be so. But awesome. if you had Android drones that you could fight virtually. Like, the, the virtual fighting drones already kind of exist, but if it was, like, a proper good game made for it, that could be kind of cool. Like, shield drones. Shield drones. Yeah, NVIDIA drones. My drone would be shielded straight up. You yeah. couldn't take it down. Well... What are we talking about? Considering they'd probably be the same, so would mine. And then that would be a boring fight. Because two paladins with divine feet shield is really boring for about six or seven seconds. All right, so there's a rumor that Apple will be moving away from the home button. Yeah, so full full screen screens. Yep, they are apparently developing a chip that will allow that functionality, <clears throat> that functionality to be integrated into the touch screen. And based on that, they've already got force. Force Touch on the Apple Watch, which, by the way, is horrible <laughs> compared to Force Touch on the MacBook. Yeah, it's like here. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll show you because it's like, it's just dumb. Okay, um, oops. Okay, so Force Touch. So like, press and then like press harder. You notice how fast the screen turns off? Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. It's like, we don't have very good battery life. Screen off. Screen off. Screen <laughs> off as quickly as possible. Always. So go ahead, and Force Touch it. Like just press and then hold. No, no, the screen. Okay, now you've got Siri open. <laughs> Press that, harder. That's weird. Yeah. So it's just a vibe on your wrist. Whereas, did you ever use the MacBook's touchpad? No. Ah, oh, okay. Well, then you don't even know what you're comparing against. I have no idea what okay. touch is. So... It sounds cool. You press, you press harder on the trackpad, and then haptic feedback makes it feel like there's two layers of click. When actually on the MacBook, there is no downward movement there even are no at all. Layers of okay, can you just... okay, so let's move on to our next news topic. Anyway, I think Force Touch on a touchscreen is going to be super dumb, but but I also got sold on it on the MacBook, so there you go. Uh, this is from Kit Guru, originally posted by Boozoo. PCI Express 4.0, uh, the new data rates and new connector to be finalized by 2017. So we're going to get a doubling to 16 giga transfers per second uh, of the available uh, communication bandwidth. So that is something along the lines of, oh balls, what is it? I think it's like two gigabytes per second per lane or something like that. Hold on, hold on, yeah. Um, yeah, a 1x interconnect will transfer up to two gigabytes per second. When you compare that to the 250 megabytes per second of Gen 1, wow. <laughs> now, I believe optics are going to be involved. Um, oh, really? 
Not in not uh, <clears throat> so not in this one necessarily, oh. but a fifth generation is going to almost definitely rely on optical rather than copper links. But this one is still copper. You're still going to be able to have risers, but they won't be as long, and it's going to be a new connector. So this is a tricky thing. Backwards compatibility for the first time is not going to be a given. So PCI Express. Gen 3 cards will work in a Gen 4 slot, but a PCI Express Gen 4 card will not work in your old Gen 3 motherboard. So what's going to be really interesting to see here is if AMD, once again, doesn't have the R&D to develop oh. the latest PCI Express standard, we could see a pretty devastating impact on their CPU sales, at least for, for upgraders. Because I don't know if a lot of you even realize this. There is not a, an AMD chipset that supports PCI Express 3.0. But they're do mm. Like, their graphics cards do. But they literally have that only for the benefit of people plugging them into Intel They're chipset talking about making that new CPU, though, right? Have they said what socket it's on? Uh, probably a new socket. We I'm got, sure they know socket. about this. Oh, no, that's 2017. Yeah, that's yeah PCI Express 4.0 is 2017. So um, Zen should be coming next year. Yeah. So hopefully... AMD is laying the groundwork now to support PCI Express 4.0. Because not being able to get a new graphics card in one year, not being able to get a top of the line new graphics card in one year, would be pretty rough. It's uh, yeah, the the twenty. Well, remember too, the spec will be finalized by twenty seventeen. Uh, yeah, so it won't really be out on consumer boards for quite a while. So it'll be. It's going to be a while. But you know, if it was twenty seventeen, I don't know that I would necessarily invest in like an Uber rig. If PCI Express 4.0 is around the corner. Yeah. Uh, with that said, Just I mean... Just because you want to be able to put new cards into it. We could see, yet again, we could see it happen again where top tier cards could be released for both interfaces. We've seen this before. In the AGP to PCI Express transition yeah. era, you could buy an X800 XT uh, AGP or an X800 or X850 or like whatever it was. There were PCI Express and AGP versions of like similar power graphics cards at the time. So I don't know. And it probably won't matter. I don't know how it'll be handled. Graphics cards probably still won't be too fast by then. Yeah, like I don't think you'll need the extra bandwidth. It's just, well, I mean, it depends what we're doing with graphics cards. Like if they find a way, you know, maybe HBM memory and like, you know, your new VR setup are going to have some like crazy fast interconnect or something like. You know, imagine this for a second. What if you had like a hyper high resolution display for VR that required literally a PCI Express link to your computer? <laughs> like what if you couldn't run over DisplayPort? Think about that for a second. Like what if you had to have like d like like PCI Express with like repeaters in order to get enough distance to like but what if you could play it like 16K or 32K or something crazy like that There's got to be a, a visual f fidelity limit or whatever Yeah, but I don't think we're anywhere near it. No, I just, Is yeah. 8K the limit, uh, you think? I have no idea. 4K isn't the limit. We I know that much. No idea. I think Carmack there's, wants there's... 4K because that's what there is, not because that's yeah, the yeah, limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's the other problem is there's other stuff that needs to be increased too. Yes, there's a lot of stuff. So that like needs we to be won't even know that. what the limit is because, it, say if we're there and there's other problems, you won't necessarily know. Yep. You have to leave it to other things. So I speaking no of clue what it's gonna be. leaving to do other things, I think that's it for the WAN show today. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. A huge thanks to our sponsors for putting up with this guy. I'm sorry. Thank you to Squarespace for... Oh, I can't even believe it. I love you, Squarespace. I can't believe... Build it beautiful. I can't believe we DDoSed your mom's website. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have an assignment for you. Move her to Squarespace? By the next time we do a Squarespace spot on WAN show. So next WAN show. Her site needs to be on Squarespace. Okay. So that we can show it not going down. That's fine. On I Squarespace. I honestly thought it already was. And I know she wants to, so I'll just probably do it for her. Okay. All right. Or I'll walk her through it. Okay. She made that one all by herself, though. And that was even harder. So it's probably going to look better on Squarespace. It probably will. And, like, I even noticed the page wasn't loading that and fast I was, I was and stuff, and I was like... I was looking at it earlier weird. today, and I was wondering why there wasn't a, a purchase button on one of the things. And I was like, what the heck? Because the site's broken. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so we'll we'll fix that. Oh, so thank you guys yeah. for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And do we really have seventy two hundred of you every week to look forward to now that school's out? Yeah. You guys rock. School should always be out. Am yeah. I right? Am I right? Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! yeah. Oh. Wow. Did he just say what I think he said? Yes. You know what's really funny is I was I was even gonna tell you on the show today that Squarespace just locked in as like our sponsor at CBS. Oh, we're not streaming, are we? Yes. I think so. They didn't. Oh, they didn't. Oh, well, the show's over. <laughs>